Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture. Hands on your knees. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Head, neck, shoulders, back in a straight line. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Shift your awareness to your breath. Shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, Brumadhyaya. And at the Brumadhyaya, visualize the form of the Guru or your Ishta Devata, if you have fun, or a brightly burning candle flame. If visualization is difficult, then you can also experience a subtle pulsation at this point. Maintaining your awareness and the experience at the eyebrow center, we shall chant the mantra Om three times, followed by the Shanti mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Om. Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvena Vaditamastu Ma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Arihi Om Gently rubbing your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. Then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hariyom. Satsat. A very warm welcome to all the participants of the Swadhyay Satra. Today is the culminating session. For the last 10 weeks, we have tried to understand the meanings of the sutras. Yoga is a practical science, a science of the inner self. And the Raj Yoga Sutras provide a very clear, defined path to manage the mind. And in the first chapter of the Yoga Sutras, Maharshi Patanjali has summarized the entire journey, defined that and taken us on the logical path as it unfolds. So let us begin our final session with Sadhguru Vandana offering tribute to Guru who lights up our path 
then we will offer tribute to Maharshi Patanjali. After which we will look at the sutras 47 to 51. And after that, I would like to summarize the entire Samadhi Pad, all the 51 sutras. So we get an understanding of what the logical flow is. And then bit by bit, as is possible, we have to slowly start working through that. Sadguru Vandana. So let us begin. Sri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Ram Sri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Ram Bhava Sagar Tarana Tarana He Ravinandana Bandana Khandana He Charanagatha Kinkara Bhitamane Guru Deva Daya Karadina Jane Rudikandara Tamasa Bhaskara He Tuma Vishnu Prajapati Shankara He Para Brahma Parat Para Veda Bhane Guru Deva Daya Karadina Jane Manavarana Karana Angushahe Naratrana Kare Hari Chakshushahe Gunagana Parayana Deva Gane Guru Deva Daya Karadina Jane Kula Kundalini Toma Banjaka He Rudi Granti Vitarana Karana He Mahimata Vagochara Shudhamane Guru Deva Daya Karadina Jane Abhimana Prabhava Vimarda Kahe Ati Dina Jane Tumaraksha Kahe Manakampita Vanchita Bhakti Dhane Guru Deva Daya Karadina Jane Ripu Sudana Mangala Nayakahe Sukha Shanti Varabhayadayakahe Rayatap Hare Tavanam Gune Guru Deva Daya Karadina Jane Tavanam Sada Sukha Sada Kahe Patitadham Manava Pava Kahe Mamamana Sachanchala Ratri Dine Guru Deva Daya Karadina Jane Jaya Sad Guru Ishwara Prabhakahe Avaroga Vikara Vinashakahe Manalina Rahe Tava Shri Charane Guru Deva Daya Karadina Jane Shri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Ram 
श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम जय जय राम जय जय राम Offering pranam to Guru, take his blessings, so that we can walk the path towards self improvement, self enhancement, and culminate in self realization, one life or the other. Now we move ahead and invoke the blessings. of maharshi patanjali by the dhyana mantras dedicated to maharshi patanjali yogena chittasya padena vacham malam sharirasya cha vaidyakena yo pakarottam pravaram muninam patanjalim pranjali rana tosmi patanjal mahabhashya चरक प्रति संस्कृत मनोवाक्काय दोषाण अंत्रे पत नम ओ नाउ लेट अस लुक एट द मीनिंग्स ऑफ द सूत्र फोर्टी सेवन टू फिफ्टी वन Again, we have to wait for a few moments while technology takes us through. You are able to see the screen now. Yes, sir. Okay. So, let us go through the sutras, and then we will have a quick look at the meanings. Let us begin. निर्विचार वैशारध्येध्यात्म प्रसाद ऋतंभरा त्र प्रज्ञा ऋतानुमा प्रज्ञाभ्यामषया विशेषाथवा तज्ज संस्कारोन्य संस्कार प्रतिबंधी तस्पि निरोधे सर्व निरोधान्बीज सी निर्विचार वैशारध्ये अध्यात्म प्रसाद ऋतंभरा तत्र प्रज्ञा श्रुत अनुमान प्रज्ञाभ्याम अन्य विषया विशेषाथवा तज्ज संस्कार अन्य संस्कार प्रतिबंधी अपि निरोधे सर्व निरोधान निर्बीज समाप्ति नाउ लेट अस लुक एट द मीनिंग्स निर्विचार वैशारध्ये अध्यात्म प्रसाद निर्विचार बियॉन्ड थॉट्स बियॉन्ड ऑल दोज इम्पल्सेस विच कीप कमिंग इन वैशारध्ये हैविंग मास्टर्ड अध्यात्म स्पिरिच्युअल प्रसाद नॉलेज प्युरिटी इल्युमिनेशन दॅट कम्स अ न्यू स्पिरिच्युअल इल्युमिनेशन डेव्हलप्स on mastering nirvichar samadhi so when we go into that level then something new comes up something which was not available till then so what is that new which develops that is rutambhara atra pragnya rutambhara means that which is full of the highest knowledge the ultimate truth 
that super consciousness, that knowledge starts developing. At this juncture, on the borderline of Nirvichar Samadhi, the ultimate truth of all cosmic experiences dawns within the individual super consciousness. Now, it might feel a little bit uh, contradictory that we are speaking of super consciousness and still speaking of individual. The reason why that is mentioned is that although at this level, the individual is reaching and connecting out to the super conscious, still few remnants, the last bits of individuality still are there. And that's why it's on the border of that. It has still not crossed and gone beyond. And at this point, when we have gone beyond Sabij, they say the Rutambhara Pradnya awakens. And what is Rutambhara Pradnya? Shrutanumana Pradnya Abhyam Anya Vishaya Visheshatha. Shruta, that which is heard or that which has come to us from the Shrutis. Anumana is the inference. When you infer based on the knowledge you have developed, then, so this is the knowledge which we receive from the world external. And the based, and based on that knowledge, a specific pradnya develops within us. And we are able to work our way through the world, through all these activities, right up to samadhi. But at this point, there is something which is beyond this that starts coming in. This Rutambhara Pradnya is different from the other two. Shruta, so Shruta Pradnya and Anumana Pradnya. Rutambhara Pradnya is difficult, is different. And the difference is because of the state of mind which has gone almost close to transcending everything, reaching the Nirvichar state. What happens in that situation? In that situation, Tajja Samskara Anya Samskara Pratibandhi. Due to this, that born from this, there is an impression on the Chitta. And this chit impression blocks, overpowers, goal, you know, uh, overshadows all other in impressions. No other impression has any impact now, now that this has started. It's just like you have got few small LED bulbs, but all those LED bulbs go away when you put on a strong halogen light. So same way, this samskara overrides, wipes away, blocks, any other impression. So on the chitta, nothing else can fall except this. And when that happens, then we need to, they say, go beyond that also. Tasya api nirodhe sarva nirodhan nirvijaha samadhi. Then even that needs to be blocked. When even that gets blocked, when that is blocked, obviously everything else is also blocked. Then the Nirbija Samadhi, the highest, the culmination of yoga unfolds. That is the conclusion of the first chapter of the Patanjal Yoga Darshan, the Samadhi part. This chapter, this section speaks on the culmination to Samadhi and the road towards that. And now I would like to take you on the journey, how we began and where we are today. Intellectually, of course. We started with the first week where we had Atha Yoganu Shasanam, the complete instructions 
इदानीं योग योग चित्त वृत्ति निरोध ब्लॉकिंग योग इज अ मेथड टू ब्लॉक द वेव पैटर्न राइजिंग इन द चित्त डूइंग दैट तदा द्रष्टु स्वरूपे अवस्थान डूइंग दिस द जीवात्मा गेट्स एस्टाब्लिश इन वंस इनहेरेंट इन ए ट्रू फॉर्म बट वेन दैट इज नॉट द केस देन वॉट हैपन्स वृत्ति सारूप्यम इतर एट अदर टाइम्स द द्रष्टा अपियर्स टू बी वन विथ विच एवर फॉर्म द चित्त वृत्ति आइडेंटिफाइज विथ सो ना वॉट इज दिस चित्त वृत्ति सो वृत्ति महर्षि पतंजलि से वृत्तय पंचत क्लिष्टा अक्लिष्टा द वृत्तीज कैन बी कैटेगराइज इन टू फाइव कैटेगरीज एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑन द सिचुएशन दे क्रिएट एन एजुटेशन or they don't so you see when it is the last stage when the rutambhara pragna has awakened then the vrittis of the external world will still be coming up but they are not having an impact you remember what they had said in sutra 49 then they they don't give rise to any klesha agitation now what are those vrittis प्रमाण विपर्य विकल्प निद्रा स्मृत दीज आर दाइव एक्चुअल नॉलेज बेसलेस इन्फॉर्मेशन फैंटसी स्लीप एंड मेमरी प्रत्यक्ष अनुमान आगमा प्रमाण प्रमाण मीन डायरेक्ट कॉग्निशन बाय द हेल्दी सेंसेस इन्फरेंस बेस्ड ऑन दिस एंड द टेस्टिमनी फ्रॉम दुतीज फ्रॉम दोज हू हैव experience that ultimate that is pratyaksh that is praman so then what is viparyayo viparyayo mithya gnanam atad rupa pratishtham viparyay is the false information about an object arising due to the erroneous superimposition of a perception of another object on the prior object this perception is not based on the true form of this prior object next vikalpa shabda gnana anupati vastu shunya here the quality is different it is a fanciful imagination about something where the words make sense but the sentences don't like the gulliver travels lilliputs and uh, giants so they make sense but they don't have a basis in reality what we consider as reality obviously then nidra abhava pratyaya alambana vritti nidra the vritti which has an absence in any external object as the basis is nidra what is smriti अनुभूत विषय असंप्रमोश स्मृति रीलिविंग द कॉग्निशन एंड एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट विच वॉज प्रीवियसली एक्सपीरियंस्ड बाय द सेंसेस इन एबसेंस ऑफ दैट ऑब्जेक्ट एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई हैव सीन द ताजमहल एंड देन आई रीलिव दो मेमरीज आफ्टर आई हैव कम अवे फ्रॉम आगरा ताजमहल इज नॉट इन फ्रंट ऑफ माई आईज बट आई रीलिव दैट that is memory okay so these are the five vrittis which can cause disturbance due to which the jivatma identifies with the external world and forgets the swarupa okay so then what do we do to be able to go beyond that we need something अभ्यास ब्लॉकिंग ऑफ दिस फाइव वृत्तीज कैन बी अचीव्ड बाय कंटिन्यूड एंड डेडिकेटेड एफर्ट एंड डिस्पैशन अभ्यास एंड वैराग्य तत्र स्थित यत्नो अभ्यास व्हाट इज अभ्यास 
the constant and prolonged effort and practice put in to remain being established in that state is abhyasa. What are the attributes of abhyasa? Satu dirga kala nairantarya satkara sevito dhulabhumi. It has to be tatrasthita yatnaha. But in addition to that, it has to long, it has to be for a long period of time. That firm basis has to be taken with reverence for prolonged period of time without a break or interruption. Then it is of value. That is abhyas. So now what is vairagya? Vairagya generally is a scary word, but he has explained it very beautifully. Drushtanu shravika vishaya vitrushnasya vashikara saunknya vairagyam. Freedom from the yearning, the thirst or cravings of experiencing once again the sense objects which has been experienced previously is known as vairagya. Absence of attachment. Tat param purusha khyate he gunavaitrushnam. The knowledge that the purusha or supreme consciousness is beyond chitta leads to the cravings, uh, to, uh, leads to the freedom from the cravings, from the gunas. So therefore, when we connect to that higher level, then the vaitrushnam, absence of attachment from the gunas also happens Automatically. When this happens, what is the ultimate? When that happens, then we go into a state which has got four sub-categories. Vitarka, vichara, ananda, asmita, anugamat, sampradnyataha. It, we go into sampradnyat samadhi, which is a state where associations is in the present in the form of vitarka, reasoning. Vichara, reflection, ananda, bliss, asmita, sense of individuality. Between each of these, there is a stage. As one moves from one stage to the other, there is a stage of the other. Virama pratyaya abhyasa purvaha samskara sheshaha anyaha. The other, asampradnyat samadhi, is preceded by the abhyas of the experience, the cessation of the content of the mind, the chitta vritti, and only very faint traces remain in this state. Now, he has given us what the goal is. But who can reach this goal? He says, those who have transcended their bodies, videha, or who have accomplished Dissolution into Prakriti, Prakriti Laya, by birth, these people can attain this state. Bhava Pratyayo Videha Prakriti Layana. Or, Shraddha, Virya, Smriti, Samadhi, Pradnya, Purvaka, Itaresha. For others who are not that way by birth, Asam Pradnya can be reached by devout faith willpower, memory, and intelligence arising from sampradnya. Then you reach into asam. Obviously, this also is not easy. For this, you need tivra samvayagana asanaha. For this, you need to have an intense yearning. Only then you reach this. There are three types, Mrudu, Madhya, Adhimatra. Now, amongst all of them, the intense one is the only one of importance for us. The way can be to achieve, the desire to achieve can be mild, medium, intense or overpowering, of which the last, the very intense or the overpowering, where nothing else is of any value. That is what we need to reach into. Again, it is not easy for us to reach these states. So what do we do? Is there a way out? Yes, there is a way out. 
the way out is Ishwara Pranidhanadva or Sampradnya can also be achieved by Ishwara Pranidhan, devotion to Ishwara. Now, what is this Ishwara? There he explains. Klesha, Karma Vipaka Ashayaihi, Aparamrashtaha, Purusha Vishesha, Ishwara. Who is Ishwara? Ishwara is a special entity. He is not a person. It is an entity who is beyond and also unaffected by all the painful conflicts, the results of our actions and the past impressions. A person who is beyond all of this and also not affected by all of that is Ishwar. Tatra niratishayam sarvadmya bijam. In this entity called Ishwara rests the seed of the all-encompassing and all-pervading knowledge which is beyond all comprehension. That which is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, that is present here and that is beyond comprehension. Intellect doesn't work there. Mind doesn't work there. It goes further. Sa esha purvesham api guruhu kalena anavacheda. This entity, Ishwara, is greater amongst all the accomplished beings who ever existed before now. And as such, he is the guru, the master of these masters too. And this entity is eternal. It is never eclipsed by time. No matter how great a person, Rama, Krishna, Adi Shankara, Jesus, Everybody, they were eclipsed by time. But this entity, Ishwara, is not eclipsed by time. Time cannot, you know, kill this. It is beyond time. Such is the quality of this entity. And that is the devotion to this entity we have to develop. But the question arises, how can we develop any connection with something which is incomprehensible? I, will, I can get in love with a gulab jamun because I can see the gulab jamun, I can eat the gulab jamun, I can taste the gulab jamun. But how can I fall in love with a concept or get devoted to a concept which my mind cannot comprehend? That is why Maharshi Patanjali says, Tasya Vachakaha Pranavaha. Pranava Om is the symbol or representative of Ishwara. Why is this mentioned? Tad Japas Tadartha Bhavanam. Chanting repeatedly of this mantra and mentally dwelling upon this meaning allows us to connect with that. What happens by doing that? Tataha pratyak chetana adhigamo apyantara bhaya bhavascha. Due to that, the consciousness turns inwards and all the obstacles are also overcome. Because when we are trying to do this, there will be some obstacles. Every journey has some obstacles. So, not only can we start on this journey, but we can also overcome the obstacles. And just to give, give us a heads up, he tells us now, what are the obstacles? Vyadhi, Styana, Saushaya, Pramada, Alasya, Avirati, Kanti Darshana, Alabdha Bhumikatva, Anavasthitatva, Chitta Vikshepa, De Antarayaha. These are the problems. What are they? Disease in the body, mind, whichever. Inertia, a doubting mind, procrastination, erroneous behavior. While we know it is wrong, but still we can't actually help doing it. Laziness, craving for sensorial enjoyments, a confused perception, inability to reach and maintain, maintain. 
that's very important a subtle state of mind and a distracted mind these are the obstacles which can cause disturbances in the chitta not allowing it to reflect the tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam and here you can you will have some extra freebies thrown in what are they dukha dharmanasya angame jayatva shwasa prashwasa vikshepa sahabhuvah along with the above there are some which come free they are sorrow depression unsteadiness in the body and erratic breathing these are also some things which exist with the diseases the problems the er errors the obstacles so now that we understand that these are the obstacles before this also he has said that tad japas tadarth bhavanam has to be done to overcome these also to get the consciousness inward and overcome it also now that is being spoken about in greater detail to overcome the obstacles concentration on a single object or a principle has to be practiced earlier he said tasya vachakah pranavah tad japas tadarth bhavanam focus only on om but now he says that you can pick up one thing and stick to that doesn't have to be only om because it might become too abstract for somebody so pick up one thing but stick to it then you will be able to overcome these problems this is for the time when we are doing the sadhana but we don't do sadhana 24/7 so in such a situation when we are not doing sadhana we are interacting with the world then we need to find ways how we can maintain that state and not get disturbed how can we do that that he has explained in sutra 33 maitri karuna mudita upekshanam sukha dukha punya apunya vishayanam bhavanata chitta prasadanam bring the pratipaksha bhavana cultivate the opposites friendliness cultivate for pleasure compassion for pain happiness for virtues and indifference towards the vices now either it is the experience or the circumstances event or person in imposing inflicting propagating that experience for both of them cultivating the approach of friendliness compassion happiness and indifference towards the experiences of pleasure pain virtues and vices respectively with the sense objects purifies the chitta so when we are doing sadhana you do concentration on one object but beyond that what do we do during the day cultivate this pratipaksha bhavana now he starts giving multiple other options if this also is difficult what do we do pracchardan vidharana abhyam va pranasya by manipulating the pranas by pranic pran vidya practices and pranayam practices we can control the chitta vishayavati va pravrutti utpanna manasah sthiti nibandhani or the state of steadiness can also be brought about by observing the experiences and the outgoing tendencies if it is not possible to do pracchardana vidharana abhyam then do vishayavati va pravrutti utpanna manasah sthiti nibandhani or by vishoka va jyotishmati there is a limited state of mind which is beyond sorrows let us connect to that or 
vitaraga vishayam vachitam by making a person who has connecting to the person who has transcended passions there there is a person who has done that if we use that as a symbol then that energy also lifts us so, then next swapna nidra dhyan alambanam va or by prov providing support or object of contemplation through the knowledge from dreams and sleep you can use even that as an object for contemplation yatha bhi mat dhyana dva now he says doesn't matter you take anything whatever your mind desires or anything where your mind gets stuck upon use that as a means of meditating now doing so what do you achieve first thing is paramanu param mahatva antaha asya vashikara you can attain mastery over the entire creation ranging from the smallest to the largest once you attain that then next step is shina vrittehe abhijatasya iva manehe gruhitru grahana grahyeshu tatsta tadanjanata samapatti attainment of samapatti or samadhi when after doing the master, attaining the mastery slowly the vrittis start going down and we come into a state of kshina vritti then what happens there is a complete absorption of the mind into the cognizer the cognition and the medium everything fuses into one there is no discrepancy what is outside comes in without a any disturbance just like when we have a crystal which is very beautifully polished and you place it on whichever object red green blue it will just reflect that object completely without any uh loss of fidelity that is known as samapatti in this state the consciousness that is identified with the sound with the true knowledge and the reasoning behind it. so there are these three and the consciousness moves within these three levels the, when it is at such a state it is said to be in the state of savitarka samadhi then next stage nirvitarka what is nirvitarka smriti parishuddha swarupa shunya artha matra nirbhasa nirvitarka then the reservoir of memories which we have collected over so many lifetimes that is also depleted and cleared out purified the self awareness with the external identity is lost then the essence of true knowledge starts shining up that is nirvitarka beyond tark so these are the sub subtle states which are the part of samadhi savichara nirvichara and other these have been spoken about now he says that these matters we used to think that samadhi is only one thing but it is not one thing it is a range and what is the ultimate the culmination of this range all these these sukshma vishaya culminate in alinga what is alinga that form of prakruti which is the beginning point of the evolution according to vedic scriptures they according to yoga not just vedic scriptures there is two principles purusha and prakriti according to vedanta there is one ultimate principle brahman and from brahman prakriti is formed whichever way we have 
purusha and prakriti this prakriti is the basis of the entire creation from there this principle undergoes metamorphosis transformation and from being very subtle it slowly starts becoming less subtle and less subtle and less subtle and less subtle till a time that it slowly starts being perceivable and then it starts becoming manifest so this ultimate the beginning case zero as it is called that is a linga which doesn't need any external support anything which is coming beyond needs a support of the chain above and above but the top is this prakruti which doesn't need it doesn't have anything beyond it so by practicing we reach that ultimate level reaching that level is known as sabija samadhi and at that point a new awareness develops which eclipses all the other awarenesses that is known as the rutambhara pragnya and when the rutambhara pragnya comes up then we are at the threshold of the ultimate experience and this rutambhara pragnya eclipses all the other knowledges and it does not allow anything else to impact the chitta vritti you only are in the state of rutambhara pragnya experiencing knowing the entire creation from an inner perspective not through the senses going beyond even that is nirbija samadhi the ultimate connecting with purusha connecting with that original which is beyond all those thus we have understood we have come to know during this 51 sutras what is the pathway of evolution we have had evolution of the body now we need to have the evolution of the consciousness of the awareness and what is the path this is the path which has been spoken about and what are the practical methodology to achieve them that has been spoken about what are the difficulties has been spoken about what are the options and ways out that also has been spoken about and in conclusion they remind us maharshi patanjali reminds us about the ultimate goal because when we are walking the path we are not at the goal but the aim the goal that ultimate destination beckons and it is due to that that we keep taking a step forward one by one and that is why in this section maharshi patanjali has spoken about samadhi he realizes that we have not reached there but if we cannot visualize our goal clearly we can never reach it that is why he has made an effort for us to understand this doing which we can progress step by step this is not a journey of one lifetime this is a journey of multiple lifetimes and we have to proceed progress step by step slowly carefully and reach that step some time or the other in future that is the basis of all knowledge and that is the basis of all self improvement with this we complete the first chapter samadhi path the first leg of four chapters of freedom hari om tat sat namo narayan jai and to conclude a short small disclaimer 
anything i have tried to explain this as per my knowledge and my understanding anything which is a shortcoming is due to my limitations and anything and everything which is good which is showing us the knowledge know that to have descended from the grace of guru with this i conclude the first chapter of samadhi path offering humble pranam to gurudev close your eyes for a few moments and become aware of the presence of the guru tatva let us offer our pranam our gratitude to the guru parampara who has brought this knowledge to us param guru swami shivanand ji maharaj gurudev swami satyanand ji maharaj gurudev swami narendranand ji maharaj and peethadeshwari swami satyasangam ji let us offer pranam to the entire guru param it is only through this that we receive the path to move offering pranam to them let us maintain that awareness and move into shanti path to conclude today's session taking in a deep breath om oh सतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गम मृत्योर्मा मृत गमय स्वस्तिर्भवर्भवर्ण मंगल लोका समस्ता सुखिनो ओंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकम बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता शांति 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 मुद्रमेवता चिता बंधुशाम विद्याद्रविणम सर्व मम देव देव मम देव देव मम देव देव हरि हरि ओम ओम अगेंस्ट experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes to the brain to the whole body and then gently 
Move the palms away. Open your eyes. Ariyo. Sat. Monaray. Jai. So we have completed our uh, first satra. If you have anything to ask, anything to which is not clear, we can spend a few minutes for that. Namonarayan Swamiji. Namonarayan Pitta. Uh, today has been a very, very, very uh, contemplating. It's 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 a summary and. Uh, it is a so it is a very fulfilling actually because every time every week we saw a part of it so the other part uh, became fuzzy and overall picture did not look very clear but uh, this summarizing helped a lot and uh, looks like i mean uh, every time uh, we attend some of uh, such uh, discourse all these weeks for me it has been like it looked as if everything is very clear and we can follow this. And later, when the next week came, it looked like uh, whatever we learned last week disappeared. But now when we summarize, it looks like it is there. It did not disappear, but some other layer is just formed over it. So hopefully, uh, we will take it forward and uh, keep them in our mind all through. So there are a few things that I noted down. I don't know if there is time to take all this. Uh, if others have uh, questions, maybe, uh, you know, uh, uh, we should. Uh, why, I, do, why, I, don't you, why don't you first start and then we will see. Okay. Uh, and uh, there are so many questions, Swamiji. So my request is like, let us uh, have, uh, you know, I, I mean, after one one of my questions, I will ask, if we, maybe we will rotate yeah. the chance of asking. Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, so first thing is about Pramana. Mm -hmm. uh, now, facts are facts, right? They are out there. Now, why is that added as uh, one of the vrutis? Yeah. So, you see, uh, what is a vritti? Something that uh, blurs our vision in the sense. No. Yes. A vritti is something. Waves. Yeah. Which is a wave, yes. But in this context, vritti is something uh, which by, by uh, it, uh, you, like, let us say on the screen, the uh, television screen or the uh, cinema screen, you have got some waves which are forming. And so a shape is seen, a form is seen. Now, this form can be either what, you know, this form uh, which is seen on the screen has been categorized into five types. One is Pramad. You have seen something and that exact thing is being replicated on the screen. Or Viparyaya. You have seen something, you have perceived, the senses have perceived something, but due to some uh, garble, suddenly something different is coming up. But then when it clears up, then you can see that is the viparyaya. Vikalpa, there is a garbal, but it is a funny garbal by which uh, what is ex uh, being spoken of the units are correct, but the larger picture is not. So you see, uh, these vrittis are now classified into five types. So uh, Pramad is one of the that vritti wherein you are able to perceive something and that perception goes as is. There is no uh, breakage in the perception. That is called as Pramad. And when there is uh, some garbling, that is Viparyaya and Vikalpa. Then when you, the vritti closes externally, but something happens internally, that is Nidra. And when memory continues, that becomes Smriti. So he has classified these vrittis. So uh, not that all are bad, right? Nothing is bad. Has he ever mentioned this is not good? He has not mentioned anywhere 
that it is not good. But isn't the whole idea chitta vritti nirodhaha? So the uh -huh. whole idea is to stop everything, right? To then block. Yeah. To block. So, but uh -huh. why do we have to block facts? Ah, okay. That's a good question. You see, uh, what we consider as facts are actually not the ultimate facts. They are situations which are happening and by uh, remaining, by, uh, suppose you go into a movie theater and you don the clothes of an actor and you st start acting. And while acting, there are all those things happens. Your wife dies, your uh, brother dies, your uh, husband dies, you know, all those things happen. You are emoting feelings at that time. But are you actually feel, uh, um, doing that? Are, is what which is happening in that movie theater which you are enacting real fact? Or is it a concocted up fact? So in the same way, when the question comes about Swarupa, what is my inherent form? Then the ability to disassociate from these external is essential. Otherwise, we cannot know who I am. As long as I identify with Amitabh Bachchan, uh, if Amitabh Bachchan identifies with one of his role or any actor for that matter, he cannot know that he is Amitabh Bachchan who is just carrying out a role or he is any actor or actress, whichever you would like. So it is essential that while carrying out everything, we need to know that, oh, I am so and so and I am doing this. So what has happened is because this drama has been going on for so long that our perception has got a bit muddled and we think that we are the role which we are playing. And that is the cause of all problems, all pain, all sorrow, all difficulties, all illnesses, everything has the basis ultimately in that. Just as you feel that there is a snake which is coming and your blood pressure shoots up, your hormones shoot up, everything starts happening. But when somebody shines a torch, ooh, it's just a rope, Whoosh, everything comes back down. So in the same way, because we are perceiving all of these to be the ultimate reality, there are things which are coming up. And once that knowledge, that awareness develops that, oh, not, uh, I'm not, whichever role I'm playing, I'm beyond that. I have to play that role. Yes. But I am not that. I am beyond that. When that knowledge comes up, then even if your hands are cut out and even this happens or that happens in the movie, Actually, to the uh, actor, nothing has happened. At the end of it, he just takes that away, walks away. He is not affected by that. He, he might on screen have cancer, but in real life, nothing is happening because it's just a projection. Knowledge of this clears out the problems and that is what is known as avidya. You know, what is avidya? What is maya? Maya means something which is not present, appears to be present. The actor, it appears that he is having cancer or he is having, he is falling in love or he is doing whatever that uh, thing he is emoting or she is emoting. But actually that is not the case. So the knowledge that there is this difference, that knowledge suddenly pulls you down. Oh, I am different than that. That is what needs to happen. That is what is the ultimate in progression. That is, to be able to reach that, this entire path is brought about. It is not said that it is bad. You see, what happens is uh, about Maya, about Avidya, about all that we bring in, society brings in, and then it uh, you know fills us with, oh, this is not good. 
this is bad, this is inappropriate. Yoga does not speak of any judgment. It just says that this is the evolution which has to happen. This is the ultimate in the evolution. And when you are in here, all this appears in this manner. If you will want to reach that level, then this is the way you go up. And if you don't want to reach that level, no problem. After a few hundred thousand years, nature will automatically take us there. It is not that we really wanted to evolve from amoeba to human beings. But nature pushed us because that is the inexorable path which nature is taking us along. And so we say if that is where we have to go, if that is how we have to be, then why wait? Why not move ahead fast? To be able to do that is the path of yoga. And in that, we have these vrittis which can agitate us. Does that help? Yeah, yes, Swamiji. Yeah, definitely. Okay, Swamiji, one question. Yeah. Uh, Sutra 37 and 38, uh, Swapna mm -hmm. Nidra, Nidra Gyanani. This I am not clear. Can you explain that? 37 and 38. Okay. Sorry, 38 and 39. I'll bring it up. Thirty-eight. Swapna nidra dhyana alambanam va. And yathabhi matar dhyana dva. So you see, uh, there is a science which is the science wherein items and objects which come in swapna or in nidra, those are utilized as objects for contemplation. You see, before this, he has been speaking about meditating, concentrating on specific objects. That he is explaining further and saying that one of the objects which can be chosen is also this. So that is what is being spoken of. He is not speaking about Swapna or Nidra, but he is saying that objects in Swapna and Nidra can also be utilized as an object for contemplation. This is for Does it have... for, for uh, no, the next to sutra. No, I am not clear again. Um, sutra 38. Before that, this is for uh, connect, connecting uh, for meditation. Something is also by meditation as desired. The, yes. Uh, that is, I'm not clear. How 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 mm -hmm. it is? Uh, uh, okay. can, yeah, I don't know. No, I'll explain. See, yeah. see, uh, for this we have to understand it from here. What is the ultimate? The ultimate is. Ishwara. And to connect with Ishwara, we have Pranava. And for Pranava, uh, how do you do? Tad japas tadartha bhavanam. You repeat it continuously and dwell upon it so that then the consciousness starts going in. He is explaining about meditation. Now, when you are doing this meditation, you need some object to contemplate upon. Initially, he said that uh, you can use Om. But if that becomes too abstract for us, then he says, doesn't matter. You pick up one object and stick to it. Now, uh, when he says you pick up one object, he has then said that uh, what are the objects that you can use for observing? Here you have uh, observing the experiences of the senses or observing the outgoing tendencies of the mind. So you're observing that and you're observing that and you're contemplating on that 
So you use that abstract object, which we is a bit easier to comprehend, or you use a luminous state of mind when everything is beautiful. Try to use that as an object, or try to use a person who has gone beyond as the object for contemplation, or you use an object in swapna or nidra. Now, after having explained all of this, then he finally says, I have explained and given you these many options. Now, if these options are also not possible for you, drop all of them. Yatha bhimata, yatha abhimata dhyana va. Or, or pick up any object no. and meditate upon it. My mind doesn't go to all these things, but my mind goes on a jalebi. I am thinking on a jalebi all the time and all the time and all the time. Doesn't matter. Use jalebi and start meditating on jalebi. And jalebi will take you beyond. So that is what he is explaining by this. That any object, you pick up one object, stick to it and keep on working on that object over a period of time. It will take you to the ultimate. Okay. Clear. Hmm? So, uh, what I will suggest is that uh, you can send me your questions and then I will try and uh, uh, either answer them through the thing or we can have a separate session wherein we can uh, answer them because then that can be helpful for everybody. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Namona Rai. Namona Rai. Let us conclude now. Namona Rai. Namona Rai.